Hi everyone, my name is Adam. Welcome to part 3 of my video series on creating a flight controller using X-Plane and LabVIEW. In this video we're going to compare our measured pitch value with a set point chosen by the operator and then use the difference between the two to drive our elevator deflections. This is a basic proportional control system. After that we'll take a brief look at how changing the gains changes the response of the overall system. Let's make it happen. If we want to turn this into a control system, we need to stop moving the elevator around manually and get LabVIEW to do it for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our elevator slider and we're going to rename it. It's going to become our, our pitch set point. We'll take it up here. and we can display our set point next to our actual measured value. So we'll be able to see them both on the graph at the same time. So that'll give us both our set point and our measured pitch and we'll change this to go from 10 to minus 10 to match our what we're showing on our graph give us a bit of a range to play with um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to use the error between the set point and our measured value to generate some sort of control signal that goes to the elevator. So the, the simplest way to do that is we subtract the two of them to get a difference. So we take our set point and we subtract from it our measured value and that'll give us some sort of error and what we could do just just for fun is try feeding that directly use that directly as our, our commanded elevator signal we'll see what happens All right. so if we run that now So I want six degrees of pitch. That's going to give us a lot of up elevator. Um, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see how we go. And you can see there, even now, with no speed whatsoever, it's already starting to oscillate, which is not desirable behavior. So, and you can see that the magnitude of the oscillation is actually growing. It is managing to get off the ground, but all is not well. So, we'll stop that. We'll stop over here. So what we need is, we need to dial that, that control surface deflection down a bit. So we can just multiply that by a constant. We'll actually create a control and we'll feed that into there. Sorry about my diagramming. I'm going to call that gain because that's a, that's effectively what we're doing so let's go over here we've got our gain we'll put it underneath 
let's run that and we'll change our gain to be 0.1 we'll see if that's any better okay we're flying through a building which is not ideal and we've probably got a bit too much roll happening at the moment let's See if the AI can sort us out a bit. Not, not doing great there, AI. Okay, so with the magic of video editing, I went away and I've added in uh, a basic roll control and a heading hold function, uh, just to make our testing of the the pitch autopilot simpler um, I won't I won't go through how they work at the moment we'll cover them in a later video uh, so let's see now if our plane does any better and doesn't fly through any buildings so I'm going to release the brakes throttle up and hopefully it will head reasonably down the runway Got our pitch set point, it's only set to about five degrees at the moment, but that's enough to get us off the ground. And climbs out smoothly. So as we accelerate, we gain elevator authority. And so you can see that as we gain that elevator authority, for a given amount of gain, we can get closer to our set point. Once everything's stopped accelerating and we reach a, a state where things are no longer changing, that's what we call the steady state. And the difference between our set point and our measured value while we're in the steady state is our steady state error. And depending on the type of system you're trying to control, you may always have a steady state error if you're only using proportional control. Um, so pitch is such a such a system where particularly as the pitch values get higher what we'll see is that the aircraft isn't actually able to maintain 10 degrees of pitch continuously and so our, our measured value actually starts to drop back off again as we lose speed um, and our steady state error will will increase but we're, we're always going to have that error and the error might not always be in the same direction uh, let's let's see what happens when we go to to minus four degrees so as th as the aircraft picks up speed it's probably going to want to pitch up and so we're actually going to end up with quite a small steady state error that's in the opposite direction around around minus four and the aircraft should be reasonably well trimmed around zero so there's techniques that we'll go into in the other videos to get rid of that steady state error now there's other other areas where you won't necessarily have that state steady state error and proportional control can be completely sufficient like roll for instance because the aircraft is is balanced in its roll axis basically any amount of aileron input will allow it to drive to a particular roll angle within within reason um, you can get away with with just proportional control on roll uh, at least until you have to start dealing with external factors like wind uh, so what else can we look at? So let's have a look at the effect of varying the gain. So right now, if we were to suddenly decide that we wanted to go to, say, 6 degrees of pitch, and I very sharply increase, we can see that we rise quite quickly, 
but we oscillate a little bit um, not too much and it, and it dies out on its own so it's a damped oscillation and if we drop back down to zero the same thing happens so I can do that and you get an idea of what the the response time is now there's there's ways that you can formally measure that and you'd actually put in proper square step edges rather than doing it by hand and you can measure the magnitude of those oscillations and how many oscillations it takes to die down and you can there's techniques you can use to to work out what gain you want uh, to achieve a desired performance but I just want to have a look at what happens as we change gains manually so what if we what if we go to one so one you can see without even changing the set point at all we start to oscillate now the magnitude of that oscillation in theory in in physics land would just keep increasing indefinitely but in reality there's limitations as to how quickly the aircraft can oscillate and how much it, it can oscillate so um, we're basically limited by inertia and wind resistance and a bunch of other things um, but we will oscillate forever so if we bring it back down to maybe 0.3 those oscillations will die out but they'll take quite a long time you see if we change we get the same thing we take quite a long time for those oscillations to die out but our, our rise time is quite quick um, but you know this obviously isn't the sort of response you'd want in say a passenger aircraft um, because that'd be very unpleasant for the passengers maybe in a remote control aircraft depending on your application maybe you don't care maybe you just need that quick response Okay, what if we go to something quite low? So what you see before, again, without even changing the set point, is that our steady state error is rising because we've lost a heap of elevator authority. And what you'll see is that when I make a sharp change, the aircraft is very slow to track that change. But it also doesn't oscillate at all, um, and you see in this case again we don't we don't actually have enough elevator authority to to hold it at that position. But for a lot of applications, you know, particularly again a passenger aircraft where your main concern might be you know not upsetting people trying to eat their meals, that that very slow response time to a step input is perfectly fine um, and so you can you can play around with your proportional gain to try and change the sort of response you get um, but the, there's limits to what you can achieve just using proportional gain so uh, we can there's other techniques we can use to have a fast rise time without oscillation and also to reduce steady state error and we'll look at those in another video uh, but for now we've got a working control system we can play around with it which is pretty cool um, and yeah we can start to get an idea of you know, what, what changing these gains actually does to a system I hope you enjoyed this video. In future videos, we'll start adding more features to our control system, such as integral and derivative terms, signal conditioning, and function generators, as well as adding more control channels for roll, yaw, and airspeed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please post in the comments section below. If you found this video interesting or informative, and would like to see more videos like it in the future, please like and subscribe.